Learn Right Clay 101 Episode 2, Part 1 Coloring Air Dry Clay with Different Color Mediums Before Cooking Hey everyone! Take note of this post as it will be our official greeting from now on. Not sure if anyone used this way of greeting before, but if you know someone else who used it, let me know so we can make a new one, okay? So it's me again, Zane, and before I start, let me thank each and every one who have supported me and stayed with me until now. And thank you for all the love I received from the first episode. In case you didn't notice, we are also now monetized. You can now support me monetarily for free by simply watching my videos and especially the ads. I know the ads are kind of a bummer, but please don't skip the ads as much as possible. They're usually just a few seconds or minutes, but they would be a big help for me and this channel. Also, I'd like to remind you to not skip any part of this video as much as possible as I will be discussing in detail how to color air dry clay. I may mention tips and tricks that may or may not be related to coloring air dry clay all throughout the video so you might miss those if you skip a part. So please look out for those and do take notes. I will be putting the list of materials and tools in the description along with affiliate links on Amazon and my Shopee affiliate link as well for those residing in the Philippines. Affiliate links help support this channel so I really appreciate it if you use them for your purchases. I will also pin the timestamps of the outline of this video in the comment section to help you navigate the video quickly. Now let's go back to our main topic. Coloring clays can be done in multiple ways. If you make your own clay like I do, you have three options to color your clay. First option is to mix the color before cooking. Second option is to mix the color after cooking. And the third option is to paint over the piece after it's completely cured. However, in this video, we will only be focusing on coloring air dry clay by mixing the color before cooking the clay. So yes, this is only applicable to DIY cook called porcelain clay. If you don't know how to make the DIY clay but you're interested, please watch the first episode of this series. If you don't want to make your own clay, that's totally cool too. But this part is not for you. Please wait for the other part or parts of this episode instead. Coloring mediums plus my honest review. First, we have dry liquid watercolor. I bought this because I wanted to try painting with watercolor, but until now I haven't used it for that purpose so I can't really say anything about it. This is just a cheap watercolor brand so I don't really expect much with it. Bebeo Acrylic Paint This is what I initially used for coloring clays because I had this for years. I mean, isn't it obvious? <laughs> But I encountered some problems with it and also ran out of the colors I normally use like the white paint. So I ended up using another brand. Creation Acrylic Paint. I bought this in National Bookstore which is a local art supply shop here in the Philippines because I ran out of the yellow Pebeo acrylic paint and this is the only brand they have at the time for the individual colors. This is translucent as it contains more water than Pebeo, so I personally don't like it that much. I had to add white paint to it to make it opaque which is quite a hassle. Focus Acrylic Paint This brand is basically what I prefer to use now among the other acrylic paint brands when it comes to painting over my clay pieces. I still use the remaining colors I have with the Febeo brand but when I ran out of them, I definitely buy Focus brand instead. I like that the colors are opaque and doesn't contain as much water compared to Creation Acrylic Paint and I believe it's cheaper than Febeo as well. Dong A Poster Paint This is what I mainly use in mixing colors to my clays now. I like how pigmented and bright the clay is when I color it with this poster paint which is why I switched from acrylic to this one. Gouache Again, I just bought this because I wanted to try painting with it but as usual, I haven't used it for such purpose same as the watercolor. Is there anyone else who hoards art materials but never use them? Raise your hand. Or I don't know, is it just me? <laughs> I doubt it. 
Montmartre soft pastels. I bought this one online and I actually wanted to buy those with 20 plus colors or something but I'm low on budget so this is what I could afford at the time. This is also not that cheap but I couldn't find other cheaper brands then so yeah. I use this mainly for shading especially for miniature foods. It works well enough for that purpose but I wish I have more choices with the shades of colors. Lastly, Neko Powder Food Color, Piotraco Gel Food Color, and Ferna Liquid Food Color. I bought these different types of food colors for the sole purpose of testing it out in this video. Yes, I'm that dedicated to bringing you quality content, alright? <laughs> but seriously, I also want to know if this will work because this is also another cheap alternative if it does work. And who knows, I might switch to any of these after the video. What I mostly see other artists recommend is the gel type, but I figured it would be nice if we can actually compare all the food color types. Anyway, if it doesn't work, I made sure to buy the colors I could more or less use with actual food so they won't be wasted. One Zane rule I have, never waste materials. If you could use them in any way, don't throw them away, okay? You may also choose to de-stash your materials and tools if you don't use it anymore, but make sure that they're still in good condition. So now that you have a brief knowledge about these brands, what are we waiting for? Let's start! Mixing paint with clay mixture Basically, different mediums may have different effects on the clay. It could affect the stickiness, dryness, and most of all, the saturation of the color. With this test, we will see if these coloring mediums will have an effect on those I mentioned, and which mediums will be lighter and which ones will be saturated in color. So first, I made a mixture of my DIY clay recipe and divided them into small cups for each of the coloring mediums. For reference, I used half measurements for the ingredients. By the way, sorry for the quality of this recording. I used my phone for this because I forgot to charge the battery of my camera. I also already created the mixture and I don't want to waste time so yeah, I proceeded with this. It's also kind of wobbly at times and that's not because there's an earthquake or something <laughs> but because I'm just using a phone clip holder. I actually wanted to retake this but that would mean I have to make a new batch of clay and I can't really afford that right now because I already made a bunch of batches before this. I recently tested other recipes and I'm sorry there's no video for that. I haven't even started any projects yet so the clays are piling up and I don't really want them to dry up and we left unused. So yeah. Anyway, this recording is only for the mixing process so you'll still see the colors better later. I decided to still include this recording because I think it helps to know which mediums mix with the clay mixture easily. We'll start with this chocolate brown Neko food color powder. You may notice the care emoji here and there and that's because I covered up the extremely bright glares because of the bad quality of the recording and I wanted to protect your precious eyes. Okay? Protect your eyes at all costs. <laughs> Reminder that this is just a small batch of mixture, but I think even with a bigger batch, it will only require about the same amount of food color depending on how saturated you want it to be, of course. Yellow Piotraco Food Color Gel We will just use one drop and see how that goes. Okay, it won't drop. <laughs> Come on, just one drop. There we go. Wow, that's pigmental, right? This didn't take long to mix compared to the powder. Egg yellow for no liquid food color. Let's try one drop again and see how that goes. Okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> Let's try it again. Oops, wow, that's a bit too much. And since this is liquid, as expected, it mixed pretty fast with the mixture. Yellow Joy Watercolor 
For this one, I don't really expect it to be very saturated because it's watercolor. But let's try to mix a small amount first and see how that will do. For some reason, it's not very watery for a liquid watercolor. <laughs> not sure if that's because it's been stored for quite some time now. This might take a while to mix. And there it is. It's not very noticeable on the camera but it's now quite yellowish. Since it's not that saturated, this time let's try mixing a little more than before. Hmm, still pretty light. So for a bigger batch, you'll most likely still get a pastel yellow even though you mixed a good amount of this watercolor. And that's probably the case too for other watercolor brands. So if ever you need light pastel colors, your go-to coloring can be watercolors. However, this may still be quite translucent when it dries, so consider that too. I'll tell you what you can do to make the color opaque later. Vermilion Symbolion Gouache I know gouache is more vivid than watercolor, so I'm expecting that the color will be a little more saturated than the watercolor. Although it's still expected to be pretty light. Again, let's just mix a small amount and see how that goes. This one mixed pretty fast and indeed much saturated than the watercolor. I'm not going to add more. Focus Acrylic Paint I just learned while editing this that Focus actually has two versions of acrylic paint. As seen on the label, one is just acrylic and the other is opaque acrylic. So in a sense, what I have is still more translucent than the opaque version. However, this is still pretty opaque compared to Creation Acrylic Paint. It's taking some time to mix. And it's also pretty light. Since that's too light, let's add more amount this time. That's also still pretty light, but I will not add any more. Let's keep it like this. Next, yellow creation acrylic paint. See how watery that is? You can actually see it flow compared to focus. See how the focus is like intact in there? Let's tilt them both and see how big the difference is. So yeah, that's Creation Acrylic Paint versus Focus Acrylic Paint. I can even pick up a good amount of paint. <laughs> anyway, let's start with a small amount and we'll add more if it's too light. In terms of saturation though, this kind of feels a little more saturated than Focus. Just a tad bit though. And it's still more translucent so we have to consider that as well. It mixes easily because it's more watery compared to Focus Acrylic Paint. Next, Primary Cyan Pabeo Acrylic Paint. Again, let's mix a small amount first. It's very very light right now and there are small particles of paint that don't get dissolved in the mixture somehow. It's just a little visible on the camera though, but you see tiny bits here and there and it may look like dirt but nah, that's small chunks of paint. This has been a problem for me ever since I started claying. Not exactly sure if it's about the brand considering I don't see particles like this from other acrylic brands or it may just be because my Pebeo acrylic paint is pretty old and there are some dried up paint on the mouth of the tube which might have been mixed on the paint somehow, I don't know. <laughs> if anyone there is actually using Pebeo, please tell me if you don't have these small particles because I really have no way of knowing unless I buy new ones. And I don't really plan to. <laughs> so even when mixing it more, those particles still won't get dissolved. Anyway, this is still pretty light so let's add more paint. Now it looks more blue than before but it's still pretty light. Anyway, that's good for now. We'll see how that will do later. I didn't actually record mixing poster color paint because as I said, I recently tested other recipes and I also made a batch there which I mixed the paint before cooking the clay. So yeah, I already tested this method with that. And that's also the reason why I decided to do this from scratch. However, for that one, I mixed yellow poster paint and white poster paint so you may expect the color later to be more opaque than the rest of the other mediums. 
And then for the sub pastel, I recorded this late since I forgot about it. This time we'll use this purple Montmartre sub pastel. So we'll just scrape some of it and then mix it. Let's see how far this small amount will go. That mixed pretty fast and the powder gets dissolved pretty easily too. Color is looking like a pastel pinkish purple. Let's try adding more and see if it gets more saturated. Color is still pretty light but it did get more saturated. I actually like the color. It's like a vibrant pastel color compared to the acrylics that looks quite a bit dull. And that's all the mediums and brands that we're going to test. Whew, that was a lot of work. But there's still more. We still need to cook them and test them out. Clay consistency check and molding. I didn't record the cooking process because it's basically the same as how you cook uncolored clay. So let's just proceed to the most important part of this video, shall we? After letting the clay set overnight, here they are. All labeled and looking pretty nice in those small cups. I actually have these hinge cups sold per piece on my shop on Shopee, so do check that out if you need them. Link is in the description. They are only good as temporary storage when working for easy access, so don't use them if you plan on keeping your clays for more than a month. For this test, I will be using this cat head and paw silicone mold. I am thinking on making this mold available on my shop on Shopee. If anyone is interested to buy it, let me know so I can get stock soon. Okay, to start off, let's test the clay colored with Ferna egg yellow liquid food color. Do you remember how we checked the consistency and state of the clay from the previous episode? If not, we'll do that again for each of these clays. Let's see if anything is different. Do take note, how properly the clay is cooked plays a big factor in this test. So if ever there's something wrong, it's most likely because of how well the clay was cooked and may not be because of the coloring used. Consistency check time! So first, let's check if we can make a smooth ball with no cracks or creases. Hmm, it's pretty smooth. No lines at all, looking pretty like an egg yolk. <laughs> Next, let's flatten the ball and check for cracks or creases on the edges. Yep, still good. Lastly, pull the clay apart and it should create a teardrop shape. And yes, teardrop shapes indeed. Was it sticky? Nope. Was it dry, crumbly, rubbery? Nope, that means it passed. Paksu paksu! <laughs> paksu means clap in Korean, by the way. Now that we know the clay is good, also not undercooked nor overcooked, then let's proceed in making cat shapes with the silicone mold. The shape is clean and nice, so let's put that aside. I did have a concern regarding color and clay, which I'd like to test here too, so let's make another cat piece. Then we'll let it dry for a few hours and then we'll combine the two pieces together to create a whole cat head. My concern is that putting two pieces together and then smoothing it out with water leaves a mark on the connection which doesn't look nice at all, especially when the clay is light colored. So we'll see if it's because of the coloring medium used or caused by another factor. Before we move on, hand check! As expected, liquid food color left stains on my hands. This is a problem as it may transfer to other colors while working. We'll test that out later though. You need to wash your hands with soap to easily get rid of it. But washing your hands too much will cause your precious hands to dry so this is not very ideal. Although the saturation of the color looks really good. Wet wipes doesn't completely wipe the stains off by the way. So if it really stains other clay colors, I don't think I would prefer this because just simply working with clay already requires a huge amount of hand washing and this pandemic also requires tons of hand washing so that's a lot of hand washing oh no our poor hands <laughs> another way is to make sure that you work from light to dark colors if you don't like to wash your hands every so often let me quickly clean this off and continue our test 
Now I'm back with clean hands. Ta-da! You better like and share this video because I'm sacrificing my precious hands here, alright? <laughs> my hands did get dry and started peeling after recording this whole episode, okay? I'm not even kidding. So, give this video some love for the sake of my hands. Anyway, let's proceed. I'll go about the checklist quickly from here on as to not make this long. Piotraco Yellow Gel Food Color PC Time Smooth Ball Check Clean Edge Check Teardrop Shape Check Was it sticky, dry, crumbly, and rubbery? Nope! Pass! check this one also left stains on my hands which is not good now i have to wash my hands again not that i'm complaining though <laughs> and i'm back with clean hands Ta -da! red symbolion gouache this is supposed to be red but the color looks more peachy honestly it actually looks nice looks like a pastel pinkish red though it's not that nice if i need red <laughs> cc time Smooth ball, check. Clean edge, check. Teardrop shape, check. Was it sticky, dry, crumbly, and rubbery? Nope, pass. check tada clean hands such a relief it didn't stain <laughs> i don't need to wash my hands at all yellow creation acrylic paint i think it became a little sticky compared from before i let it set though it's not that bad i can still knead it with my hands without any problems cc time Smooth ball, yes, it looks good, but it has a little dirt on it, so let's get rid of that. And yeah, if you ever need your clay and see dirt on it, I advise that you get rid of it immediately because it will be harder to remove dirt that's mixed in with clay after you're done sculpting your piece. Clean edge, check. Teardrop shape, check. Was it sticky, dry, crumbly, and rubbery? Nope. The stickiness is workable and I could just apply a bit of lotion or oil on my hands and that stickiness will be gone so. Again, the stickiness may be caused by the clay being a little undercooked and not really because of the coloring used. Hand check! Ta-da! Clean hands! Pebeo Acrylic Paint This is also quite sticky and actually a little stickier than the Creation brand. The tiny paint particles are still visible. Not sure if the camera is catching that up, but yeah. This clay looks like it's textured because of it. This is pretty soft compared to the others. CC time! Smooth ball, check! Clean edge, check! Teardrop shape, check! Sticky, yes, a little, but workable. Dry, crumbly, rubbery, definitely not. Does it pass? Indeed. Hand check. Ta-da! Clean hands. Break. I took a few hours to rest a bit because this is also kind of exhausting and my camera is already low on battery. So the previous ones that I made already started drying and I noticed something weird with them somehow. <laughs> 
It's barely visible on the camera but notice some white or lighter spots on the clay. Here on the left ear and on the lower left side of this pebeo colored clay. I'm not really sure why those parts became lighter in color and I actually noticed it on most of these cat heads. I never actually experienced this before so it's new to me. I think it's pretty visible here on this gouache colored clay. This part right here. Not exactly sure if that's caused by the coloring or could just be because of the petroleum jelly. Because as I said, I haven't seen this before and considering that the Pebeo one has it too. So we'll let those dry more and see if those white spots disappear. Anyway, the surface of these cat heads are kind of dry now but they're still pretty fragile. The colors are becoming darker too but they're still pretty vibrant. Yellow Joy Watercolor CC time! Smooth ball, check! Clean edge, check! Teardrop shape, check! Was it sticky, dry, crumbly, and rubbery? Nope! Pass! Hand check! Ta-da! Clean hands! Yellow Dong Up Poster Color CC time! Smooth ball, check! Clean edge, check! Teardrop shape, check! Was it sticky, dry, crumbly, and rubbery? No! Pass! Hand check! Ta-da! Clean hands! Orange Focus Acrylic Paint CC time! Ooh, this one feels a little overcooked. <laughs> well, let's see if it will still pass the test. It still creates a pretty nice teardrop shape. Smooth ball, check. Clean edge, check. Was it sticky, dry, crumbly, and rubbery? Nope, pass. Hand check. Ta-da! Clean hands. Choco Brown Neko Food Color Powder. CC time! This one also feels a little overcooked. Ball looks quite nice. There are small shallow lines here and there but it's not bad. Clean edge? Check! Teardrop shape? Check! Was it sticky, dry, crumbly, and rubbery? Nope! Pass! check it did leave very very light stains on my hands so now i'm gonna have to wash my hands again purple montmartre soft pastel cc time smooth ball check it's a little too soft, feels a little undercooked, but the teardrop shape is there. Clean edge, check. Was it sticky, dry, crumbly, and rubbery? Nope, pass! I will be making the smaller cat head for this clay because I was only able to make a small batch. I forgot to record this, remember? Stain testing. Remember how the clay is colored with food color stains my hands? There's actually a possibility that they may stain each other if used simultaneously. So let's test out whether that will actually happen or not. You may actually notice my hand is still stained by the brown food color clay and actually it doesn't transfer to the yellow I'm using here, which is actually good. So I'll use that gel food color clay as the base for our cap. Then I'll use this liquid food color clay as ears.
Let's add a snout and eyes with the brown food color clay. Let's let it dry and see if the colors bleed out. So here it is now. Completely dry and surprisingly, none of the colors bled out. It's still pretty clean aside from the dust and fur that got stuck to it while drying. Since that's good, let's try another test. This time, we'll see if the colors will stain each other if I smooth them out with a damp cloth. I will intentionally wipe everything and honestly I'm hoping it won't be ruined because it's cute, alright? <laughs> so here's the moment of truth. You can see here that the cloth has stains but I don't see any stains on the clay, it's just getting cleaned. That's really cool. I really expected it to be kinda ruined, like the brown color of the snout will smudge onto the yellow color. But nope, that didn't happen. I actually made another one here, also made with the same food color clays but I mixed white poster paint to some of them to make them opaque. This one is not yet fully cured so this may stain. This is also just getting clean, it's amazing! <laughs> Only the cloth is being stained. I'm still having doubts so let's try it with a brush this time. Sorry, I just can't really believe it's not staining. Nope, still clean. Now I'm just ruining the surface by applying too much water. So yeah, I guess food color can also be used as an alternative for coloring clays. But that's only for mixing it with clay before cooking. We might get different results if it's mixed after cooking. So here they are now. Color change after curing. Let's compare the colors from the pre cure state of each one. Yellow Pure Traco Food Color Gel. This one became a little darker. This is not opaque, so this is quite translucent. Yellow Joy Watercolor. I'm pretty surprised by this outcome considering how dark it gets as it dried. The difference is very noticeable. Yellow Creation Acrylic Paint This one didn't change that much. The color is pretty much the same but it did get just a tad bit darker than before. Yellow plus white poster paint this one is opaque so the color didn't change that much. So yes, if you want your colors to look pretty much the same before and after curing, make it opaque and add white paint. However, if you need a translucency, of course you can't do that. So you have to decide whether you want it to be opaque or translucent. Vermilion Symbolion Gouache this one also got pretty dark after it was cured. The change in color is very much noticeable. I initially mistaken this as the one colored with focus acrylic paint. Orange focus acrylic paint. This also got darker but I would say the change isn't as much as that of the watercolor and gouache. Egg yellow food color liquid. Again, the color got darker but not to the same extent as watercolor and gouache. Choco Brown Food Color Powder This is almost black now after it's cured. The difference isn't that noticeable but I was actually hoping it would look more like a real chocolate after it's cured. Primary Cyan Pebeo Acrylic Paint Again, another surprising result. 
this became like a legit blue collar. I mean, look at how pastel like the precure state is. This one still got the textured look with the tiny particles of paint though. Purple Montmartre saw pastel. This one didn't get that dark, just very slightly. It actually looks more pink now than purple, like a pastel rose pink. About the issue with the marks on connections, I'm not going to show each cat head in detail, but I think I can confidently conclude that it only happens because dust gets mixed up with the clay while I smooth them out with water. It might be because of the brush I'm using or the clay picked up some dust while I'm drying it. So make sure to clean the surface of the clay and the tools you use as well in smoothing the connections. Q&A time! During this episode, I will now add a Q&A session in this series. I apologize in advance if I don't read your name right, okay? Here are the questions I got for this episode. First question is from Mahika. Hi, hope you remember me. I want to ask, can we put coloring in clay and it won't mold? By the way, can you make a video on how you make your video? It's a request. Hello Mahi and thanks for your question. And yes, I still remember you. Since I already did a test on food color in this episode, I think that already answers your first question. But yes, you can use food color in coloring your clays. About molds though, if you make your own clay, make sure to add vinegar. Vinegar is what prevents mold from developing and you may also use lemon juice instead. Not sure about making a video on how I make my videos? The process is pretty boring as it is, but I do try to post work in progress shots as you might have seen in the community tab of my channel. And I also try to explain some of the process on my coffee page so do check that out if you like. And you can also support me there if you'd like to. Next question is from I'm Rain. Oh, I can't wait for the next episode. Seriously, you're the absolute best. By the way, what's the best medium to color air directly with in your opinion? Hello, I'm Reen. Thank you so much for the question and thank you so much for looking forward to this episode. It really really means a lot to know that there are people like you who are patient enough to wait for my content. I really really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And for me, poster paint is still the best after this whole test. It doesn't stain, the colors are pigmented, and usually cures vibrant. It's also cheaper than acrylic paint and much more accessible to me at least. Next question is from Rain Channel. Can I use soft pastel in my works? When is the best time to insert metal pens? Can I use your coloring method in paper glaze? Hi Rain Channel! Thank you so much for the question. Definitely, you can use soft pastel in your works. I mostly use them for shading, but after the test I did in this video, it can also be used to color glaze at least before cooking. Your second question is already answered in the previous episode. Please see the additional tips section. You may use the timestamps in the pinned comment in that video to navigate through the video quickly. About paper clays, I've only tried Jovi and I'm not even sure if it's a paper clay. I've only tried acrylic paint with it so far so I can say poster paint will work. But I still have some Jovi clay with me so I might try that in the next video. Next question is from Little Miss Carly from IG. How do you make the clay clean? Hi little Miss Carly, thank you for the question. Someone recently also asked me this in one of my YouTube videos and I don't really have any idea how to respond to that back then because honestly, it's also one of my problems. Only thing I advise then is to keep your hands, workspace, tools, and anything you will touch clean all the time. Keep your hands off your clothes because there are little fibers and dust stuck to it and treat your work as if you're a surgeon who's going to conduct an operation. However, because of that, I also did a little research. However, explaining them all here will make this video longer so I'll make a separate video for that alone in the future. Another question or request from Rain Channel. Please include ways to prevent creations from cracking. Well, one of the most common reasons why cracking occurs with cold porcelain air dry clay is because the clay has already started drying. It's air dry clay, so once it's exposed to air, it'll start to dry, so even when you're working with it, the drying process already starts. You'll know that it's getting dry once the texture became crumbly or rubbery. And the most basic way to prevent that is to work fast, especially if you're working on a small piece or a thin piece. Small and thin pieces dries a lot faster, so consider that when working. Always keep unused clay in an airtight container to keep them from drying. 
The hinge cups that I use works great for temporary storage as I previously stated and it's available on my shop. Try not to work with an electric fan facing your workspace. That will hasten the drying process. There are a few techniques to also prolong the smoothness and wetness of the clay but I won't go over them here. Again, it will be too long so I'll make a separate video on that as well. And that's all the questions we have. Thank you all who submitted their questions. I hope my answers helped you and to those questions that needed more details, don't worry, I'll make sure to address that in the future. Please reply to the pinned comment in this video your questions for the next Q&A time in the next episode. All the questions in that pinned comment will be answered in the Q&A time of the next video. I also created a facts page or frequently asked questions page on my card site. Please visit that before submitting your questions because they might already be answered there. I will do my best to update that page from time to time. Alright? So that's all. Thank you as always. Take care everyone. Stay safe and stay crafty. Bye!